Chris Baker with Baker DMM. This is our video coaching newsletter. The topic of today's newsletter is going to be preventing financial scams against seniors. And before we jump into a few of the examples of scams that I'd like to talk about, I'd like to go over some statistics with you from various sources. Uh, the first statistic is from the federal government Department of Justice website. And basically they state that 70% of the nation's wealth is controlled by people 65 and older, which is really, an, it's an incredible statistic and amount of money. And if right now we've got 10,000 people every day turning 65. So there's 40 million people that are seniors now. And in the next 20 to 30 years, that population is going to double. So anybody that's out there, no matter who it is that wants to take advantage of someone that's vulnerable, you know, they're now, it, 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 they're, they're, their antennas are up, you know, it's on the radar, and they know that the senior population is, is very susceptible to being taken advantage of and, and, and to take their money. Uh, another statistic was from a, a group called TrueLink Financial, and they, on their statistics, on their research, they found that financial fraud and elder abuse is roughly a $40 billion a year industry. And I think that they, they think that really one out of only 24 cases are reported that are financial fraud and other abuse. So, I mean, that number could be way more than, than 40 billion. So when you start looking at the statistics, it's a, it's a very underreported, you know, it's kind of an under the radar uh, type crime type abuse. It's, it's not easily visible. It's not easily detectable. And unfortunately, many of the times, it doesn't get reported because the seniors are embarrassed to report it. Sometimes they don't even know it happened. And other times it's they're, they're, they're the people closest to them in their lives and, and they don't want to turn them in to get them in trouble. So it's a very, very challenging uh, area, you know, and, and particularly an issue to discuss. And so we're going to just cover, you know, three of the different types of exams. And there's numerous scams out there. I mean, if you go to your your, your government websites, your, your county, your city, your state, you know, even the national, uh, there's a lot of different organizations, nonprofits, all sorts of data and facts out there on financial fraud and other abuse. But typically I would suggest going to the federal government Department of Justice website and then your state's local uh, Department of Aging, uh, you know, Adult Protective, uh, Adult Protective Services website uh, to get the most recent latest uh, data on on the issue and, and and really another important part of this topic today is is the prevention and how can we prevent it what are the measures that we can do to prevent that and, and really that boils down to financial monitoring so the, one of the first examples of, of financial scams affecting seniors out there is the grandparent scam and really this is a scam where you know, a con artist of some sort has compiled or, or obtained a listing of data about, you know, about the senior and about their family and their life and all sorts of different pieces of data about them. And they call the seniors home and they, the, the con artist says, you know, I'm, you know, I'm your grandson, so and so, and I'm in jail, I'm in trouble and I need money. I need, I need money wired to me immediately, you know, through Western Union or MoneyGram or whatever. Uh, wiring services they can get to and we need the money real like now and it's a real high pressure real rush 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 situation and they basically con the senior into sending them money uh, because they, 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 they state that they're the grandchild and that they've been arrested or they're in a foreign country and they're in distress and that's a very popular scam another scam that's very popular for particularly for seniors that have homes are uh, the contractor scam, and you know there there are, are crews out there that'll drive around and, and and they'll locate vulnerable seniors in their communities, and maybe maybe there was a bad storm and they're checking roofs in in, in the neighborhood, or maybe it's uh, maybe they're doing landscaping and and they and they have a whole you know uh, set of extra pine straw that they want to give to the to the senior or, or give them a great deal and and they'll approach the house they'll they'll knock on the door uh you know they'll say hey you know there was wind damage in the neighborhood and we're, we're, we can fix your roof there's damage on your roof and we'll give you a great deal if you just sign up today uh you know in other cases if it's the pine straw they say hey 
we had a project in the neighborhood and we have a bunch of pine straw that we need to get rid of. We'll, we'll give it to you for a fraction of the cost or half the cost. And a lot of times, again, it's a pressure situation. Sometimes there's even physical intimidation. A lot of times in these cases, it's men you know, going door to door, trying to take advantage of the seniors. And, and really, they, they pressure these people, you know, the vulnerable seniors, into taking the deal. And then even if they get done with the work and the seniors realizes, hey, you know, I don't think they really did what they said they were going to do, or I don't think it was a fair deal. I know in our particular community, there was a case where a group of guys went around and laid pine straw. And I think they laid like a hundred bales for $5,000. And the seniors said, you know, I'm not going to pay that, or I think that's too much. And, and basically the guys threatened physical harm to him and, and basically forced him to pay the money. So those are more situations where people can be taken advantage of with the contractor scam. And then of course, there's always the lottery or sweepstakes scam. And in this case, uh, you know, th this is when people, sometimes they get an email, sometimes they get a phone call. I mean, even sometimes in old you know, snail mail, they'll get notification that, hey, you won a million dollars in a Mercedes. And, and again, there was another example in our community about that, a guy won $2 million and he supposedly and he won a, a mercedes and 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 these people had actually contacted him by email initially and then it was turned in then they got on the phone and he actually he felt funny about the situation in the beginning but he ultimately did send them money he sent them ten thousand dollars out of fifteen thousand dollars and the first check he just said you know what i've never won anything i want to win i'm going to i'm going to win send him the money and then they started, once they knew they got the money, they, they got the money from him, then they really turned it on and they said, okay, now we need the next five. We need the next five. And then he really started to feel uncomfortable and he said, you know what? I just don't know if this feels right. And uh, gave him another $5,000. And finally, after that, because then they really started hounding him for the, the last five, he, he said, you know what? I'm not giving you any more money. If you're going to, if I won the lottery, I want to meet you all in such and such place at, such and such time, and I, I want to know. Yeah, you know, I want to I see the money. I want to get the car, and then I'll give you the money. And of course, at that time, the the the, the criminals, the con artists, they they just disappeared because they knew that this guy no longer was good good to get the money from. And, and so, really, you know, you know, we've covered the statistics and the data. We know that there's a growing population. We know that there's we know that there's a, a, a problem that that's potentially most likely highly underreported in, you know, $40 billion a year industry. You know, we've covered some of the scams that are out there, you know, just maybe three of uh, uh, dozens and dozens of different scams every day that are affecting many, many seniors all around the country and the world. And the key here to prevent it is financial monitoring. And really that means someone either uh, you know a close trusted family member or friend or a financial services company you know, a, 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 a financial professional is providing some sort of daily money management service where they are monitoring these accounts and a lot of times with people that are aging they have a cognitive or physical impairment they have dementia alzheimer's parkinson's they they could be a stroke victim and they have memory issues they could have arthritis they could have vision issues they could have you know, they could be depressed, they could feel lonely, you know, isolated. They, you know, as we age, you know, we start to, you know, our communities start to change. Our, we have less friends, less family, uh, you know, less interaction with people on a day-to-day -day basis. So they could be isolated. And, you know, maybe there's a substance problem. I mean, and even with, maybe it's alcohol related. And so all these different areas and issues can play into someone being taken advantage of and having some other, whether it's a family member, a friend, uh, you know, or just some stranger out there in the world that wants to take their money. If someone is not regularly monitoring their accounts, then they're never going to know that they're being taken advantage of. And they're never going to be, if you're monitoring the accounts, I'm not going to say that you're going to be able to prevent every single instance of fraud and elder abuse. I think that's that's virtually impossible. But if you're properly either monitoring your accounts or having your accounts monitored, you're going to be able to prevent it before it gets 
out of control before the, the person or, or possibly you get wiped out and have nothing left for your retirement. So the key here is, is on a preventative side, if you, if you become ill, if you get sick, if you know that you have a, a you know, if you get diagnosed with dementia or, or Parkinson's or Alzheimer's, or, or maybe you're, you're in your family history or susceptible to a stroke, uh, you know, maybe you've battled alcoholism in the past or, or other addictions or other you know, mental illnesses, maybe like depression. You know, any, any sort of different situation where it's going to possibly affect your ability to, to properly manage and monitor your financial position on a regular basis, you should be getting some sort. If you're not going to do it, you need to be getting help. And, and that message goes to, you know, if you're watching this video and you're concerned about a loved one, you know, all these things need to be thought of in relation to your loved one. And if they're not getting the help, they need to get the help. And, and it's, uh, it's our job to spread this word and get the message out to make sure that our loved ones and our friends and those that we care about, you know, are getting the support they need. And, and if, you know, if you know they can't do it, you know, make sure they've got, a, you know, a, a daily money manager, or a CPA, some sort of, you know, licensed financial professional that provides financial monitoring services you know, is helping them. And, and, and that's really the way to prevent it. I mean, we can educate ourselves all day long, which is good and is much needed, but the key here is to prevent. And so that's what we're trying to do and that's what we're doing. So if you found this video helpful or interesting, please feel free to share it on all of your social media network channels. Feel free to share it with family, friends, or coworkers, or whoever you think might benefit from viewing it. If you ever have a question that you'd like me to try to answer in one of our coaching newsletters, shoot me an email uh, with about two to three paragraphs, two to three hundred words of the issue, and we will try to answer that in one of our newsletters. And if you'd ever like to get my help personally, the quickest and easiest way is to go to our website, www.bakerdmm.com, scroll to the top, click on Request an Appointment, Fill out your information, submit it, and I'll be in touch with you in 24 to 48 hours to schedule an appointment. And until then, I will talk to you all soon.